Hey, my name is Melvin Williams and uh, I'm an aircraft mechanic, uh, CFI, and also a maintenance instructor. So I got into aviation uh, extremely long time ago. Um, originally born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. And um, the story goes, uh, I used to hear airplanes taking off uh, from my back window in Brooklyn. And uh, one day, for whatever reason, the noise was like super loud one day. And I was like, man, what the hell is that? I look out the back window and I see a dart going through the air. Come to find out later, it's a Concorde. And I'm like, wow, it's cool. You know, supersonic flight, you know, across the pond from, uh, from, from New York to, to France and uh, to, 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 to England. So um, that's really where it started. And then my aunt used to take me to JFK. We used to hang out by British Airways' uh, uh, terminal. And um, we used to hang out there and I used to watch airplanes planes all day long. This, of course, this is before security used to move people along and stuff, you know, where you had time to just hang out. Um, and then fast forward, um, the, love, the love of aviation continued. Um, I uh, ended up going to aviation high school in Queens, New York. Um, I thought originally, like a lot of students do when they go there, um, that it's going to be a school to learn how to be, become a pilot. But uh, when I got there for orientation, I realized it was a school uh, for aircraft mechanics. So um, you go there, you do your four years, you get one license, and there's actually a, a program, a fifth year program, where uh, you can apply for it. And if your grades are good enough, and you know, uh, you're do, kind of doing your thing around the school halls, um, you get uh, invited to a fifth year where you can get your second license. So I did five years of high school. I graduated at 19 with my airframe and power plant license, and um, ended up going to work for Delta Airlines. Uh, a couple of months after that, at 19, I started my career up in JFK. Started off in the cabin, fixing seat backs, changing out carpets, and you know, doing, doing that stuff called cabin maintenance. Um, then uh, a couple of months after, I transitioned to uh, line maintenance, where you know, I'm changing tires and fixing labs and troubleshooting engines and stuff like that. Um, and then fast forward, I ended up moving to Atlanta in 2010. Worked a little bit at a hangar, worked maintenance control. Um, and then I went back up to New York for a brief stint back to LaGuardia, uh, did two years there, came back down to Atlanta, um, worked the line in Atlanta, and then ended up in training where I am now. So I teach a 737 uh, um, in the maintenance department uh, at Delta. Now, as far as transitioning into flying, um, <laughs> interesting story. So um, I was working the line at the time and I got a, a gate call, we call it, you know, when an airplane pulls into a gate and he's got some type of issue, whether, you know, he found, you know, a bad tire or something, some type of issue. And um, I walk into the flight deck and this guy turns around, he looks at me. He's like, man, you know, you're a young, good looking guy, you know, you should, you should be flying, you know, you should be flying at some point. And I look at him like, dude, are you nuts? You know, are you crazy? You know, I'm, I'm an aircraft mechanic, you know, and I, I thought about flying years ago, but you know, that that dream I thought was was kind of gone, you know, and and um, you know, so I kind of blew him off, um, and then uh, maybe about a week later, maybe a week or two weeks later, I get a gate call again, and I go out to the airplane as an MD88 again, and it's the same guy, you know, tell me, hey, I, didn't I see you not too long ago? Did you start flying yet? You know, he's cracking jokes. I'm like, no, nah, man, the hell with that, you know, eh, flying, you know. Um, and then maybe about a month after that, uh, it was a little bit longer, I saw him again. And we ended up exchanging numbers, and you know, I kind of took him up on his offer. I said, you know what? Yeah, let me try this flying thing. You know, it can't be bad to get your private pilot license. You know, it, it, you know, okay, well, I could fix him, and I can fly him too. Um, and uh, he ended up getting me uh, set up with a gentleman over here at this airport um, flying club that. You know, I started flying in 2017 in January, and I ended up getting my private, and it got, you know, it became uh, addicting. Um, so it's private that I was only going to say, oh, I'm just going to get my private, but then it turns into instrument. Oh, I'm just going to do the instrument so I can fly in clouds and be extra safe. Then it turned into commercial, and now here I am as a CFI. You know, I'd have never thought. Um, when I first started back in January 2017 that I was going to become a CFI, I didn't want to teach people how to fly. Um, I just wanted to buzz around and have fun, but here I am. Um, so it kind of sucked me in and, you know, now eventually, you know, I ended up buying my own airplane too. Um, so 
I kind of went all the way. This behind me, this aircraft behind me uh, is my baby, uh, but it's a, a 1978 Blanca Decathlon. And uh, how I kind of got into this was, um, here's a short story. Um, I was flying with my CFI at the time, maybe about two years ago, and he uh, has an RV8. We ended up doing a barrel roll in it, and after that I was hooked. Um, long behold, right? Uh, Interesting fact about me, I hate roller coasters. So something about the barrel roll, I was hooked. And um, after that, um, I started reaching out, looking for a couple of aerobatic instructors in the area. I found a guy, he had a Cetabria. And um, we did a couple of flights in that. I got more hooked. Um, and then I ended up getting my tail wheel in uh, a model very, very, very similar to this decathlon here. And um, once I got my tail wheel, you know, stick and rudder, I was like, man, this is the way to fly, you know, tricycle gear. Sorry, Mike, but it's just, it's just not it, you know, uh, boring, boring flying. Um, you know, I like the whole stick and rudder thing. Uh, it makes me feel a part of the airplane, one with the airplane. Um, but anyway, that's how I started researching and getting into uh, a decathlon. I joined a Facebook group. I put out a post and said, hey, my name is so-and-so. I'm in need of the decathlon. If anybody has any help, um, you know, please reach out. And I had a guy uh, from Bowling Green send me a message, say, hey, man, you know, message me on the side. I may have something for you. And I uh, ended up getting this from him. So it worked out. It worked out perfectly. So I've owned the decathlon. Um, uh, for a couple of months now. I bought it back in September of 2020, and here we are in uh, the end of February. Um, so I've had it a couple of months. It's been great. Uh, nothing better than uh, for all your aircraft owners out there, you know what I'm about to say. Um, driving to the airport, pulling your airplane out of the hangar, just go buzzing around for the, for the hell of it. Um, it's a good feeling. Um, it feels good to own something, and uh, you don't have to get the airplane back at a certain time, and somebody else has it after you, whatever. If you're, you know, a renter, um, which is which is nice. Um, as far as the maintenance goes, um, it's been pretty pretty maintenance friendly so far. Um, you know, I'm taking it easy, doing a couple of, you know, doing some aerobatics with it. Um, not not cranking it too hard um, so uh, you know I do oil changes every 25 hours I send in oil reports or whatever just kind of trying to you know do some preventative maintenance I guess you know staying ahead of it um, but it's been great it's a really nice airplane to fly it's uh, multi-purpose aerobatics um, cross-country um, as you can see it's got nice big windows got a sunroof or whatever great visibility um, so that's that's another reason why I purchased the airplane because you know what's the what's the mission right everybody says you know if you want an airplane what do you want to do with it before you spend the money what do you want to do with the airplane um, and my goal was I wanted an airplane where I can fly it from one place to another comfortably and uh, do aerobatics in so it, it, it really kind of fits the bill um, it's not too powerful only 150 horsepower um, it gets me from point A to point B it's super light um, and I'm super light, obviously, um, so I don't weigh anything. So it's almost like, you know, you know, I'm pulling 180 horsepower um, in it because it goes. Being able to run out here and pull my own airplane out and go buzzing around uh, is nice. Um, but at the same token, you know, I got, a, I got a family at the house and, you know, I have to be able to figure out splitting time with that. Um, honestly, since COVID, um, it's been interesting trying to figure that out uh, the whole process um, you know I have a newborn uh, he's seven months old uh, just turned seven months uh, the 19th of February um, so a couple of days ago I guess if you will um, but it's a uh, it's it's kind of strange because you know you 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 know you can't be everywhere at the same time uh, but you try to figure it out and um, you know uh, my family's been very supportive with me coming out and doing what I want to do and having fun and you know with my airplane purchase and you know goals of you know eventually becoming an air, air show pilot and you know a IAC competition um, uh, uh, pilot um, but uh, or IAC competitor I guess is a better way to put it um, but it's a uh, it's been a challenge um, honestly a lot of times I just want to spend the day out here and <laughs> go home kind of whenever I want but it doesn't work out that way um, you know sometimes I got to go pick up the baby and stuff and I have to sacrifice you know good weather to go you know um, go home which is perfectly fine I mean that's all what sacrifices is right yeah I didn't I didn't necessarily do anything special I just had a goal and I stuck with it um, and that's really what it is. Um, you know, I could have looked at myself, and a lot of people do. I have guys, you know, send me emails and text messages or DMs, if you will, uh, on social media saying, hey, you know, I'm 28 years old or I'm 30 years old. It's too late for me to fly. You know, I started flying when I was 29, 30 years old. 
you know. Um, I didn't know I was going to go this far, um, but it became addicting. It, it sucked me all the way in, and here I am. Like I said, you know, I have I have an aerobatic airplane, an airplane I enjoy. Um, I'm an aircraft mechanic. I teach. I teach airplanes. I teach maintenance. Um, so we all can do it. Doesn't matter what the age is. It's just all about the passion and the drive.